and welcome back. I'm Taivo, and this is the Olivetti M280, and we are still on the Olitoba hashtag. Today, we need to finish up this computer. By now, we need to have the disk with the BIOS, and we want to put in an XT IDE inside it so we have instead of the hard drive and there's another problem problem seems to continue with this one but it's okay the problem today lays with the keyboard but more on that a little bit later let me adjust the camera and let's look at the stuff So the computer is on the table and for those of you who follow me can see something has happened to the computer and it's this area. So we were struggling with the BIOS setup and it was coming up with a lot of errors and the problem was I didn't have the BIOS setup disk. I have it here. The challenge then was that was the drive we had in it, five and a quarter, three and a half. I'm pretty sure they're not compatible with each other. We fixed this one, but I had to put it out and I put in this drive. This is just temporary while we are fixing the buyers. This drive is a combined drive with five and a quarter and three and a half inch so that we can boot on this one and go into the BIOS. So that's this task. Before we do this, there's another problem. Well, let's realize it. it's not a problem anymore because we know what the problem is. So it's just another challenge. This is the CMOS battery. There's no power in it. And this, is a, this should be giving six volt. So I bought these, which will give me six volt rechargeable. So before we can actually put in the BIOS, because it needs to be stored somewhere, we need to ensure when there's no power on the computer that we actually store the BIOS setup continuously and the clock. So this cable needs to be put onto this. So that's that task. The other task is that we're not having a hard disk in this anymore. The hard disk was completely dead, as you saw in the previous video. So we are putting in an XT IDE, which is an 8-bit controller card, which emulates that you have a hard disk. And it emulates it via a CF card that you will then put in here. So this needs to go in the computer also it comes with a cable that connects the two of them together and then we'll put this in two slots i know you can also buy other xt ides where those two are combined kind of like this so that you only have one card i have already used two of those in other computer projects so I'm left with this one now. So I'll try to see how this works. It's, it's a bit too much having two cards, but I have it. So let's just put it in and see. The last thing, and let me, before I show you that, is the keyboard. Here's the keyboard. And there's a reason the keyboard is in plastic. And let me show you, I'll take it out. There we go. And let's just move the actual keyboard away and look at the cable. You can probably see it already here. On the, it's disintegrating. It's just like that. So obviously I need to replace the cable. I've been looking for a cable. I haven't yet found it. So the task 
is to just try to take a Cat6 cable, wrap it around this one. Let me put this here. And then use some hot air. So this stick, that cable wrapped around it, hot gun with some hot air, and then eventually it should stay in the shape like this. It's not the right cable, I know, but I cannot continue using this keyboard because it's doing this. So I need to have a temporary, sorry, a temporary fi fix for this, and that's gonna be it. The reason why I'm not using any of the other keyboards that you have seen on some of my other videos, for instance, for the M24, the M24SP, the M240, and so on and so forth, is that it's not the same. It's still the Sub-D um, um, male connector, but the pinouts have changed. Let me just get you a keyboard. So this is keyboard two. And you will say that it's kind of like, sorry, I need to turn around. It's probably the same and it will not come good off for this video, but I'll also make a picture. So this is the old. It has five pins out on the top from one to five. Olivetti, sadly, very disappointing, ch changed that layout. So it's only four, so one to four, and then number nine here. So you cannot use this keyboard in this computer. You can only use this keyboard. And I only have one of these for the M280. The same keyboard has to be used for my 380 and other of the computers that I have, but I still only have one. So I need to fix this right now. So what a mess. Well, let's get started. Let's open the computer up. Let's put in the battery. And then after that, let's fix the BIOS. So I'll fix this first. Clean up the table. So all the keyboard stuff is gone. And let's look at the battery. So this is the existing old battery that doesn't work anymore. It cannot be recharged. So the idea is to take this, put it on this one. So off that goes. And if we look at this, we can see that plus and minus here, and these can actually come off like this like this so this is plus minus so what we need to do is we need to connect these two and I will do some shrinking plastic to cover it also and instead of me showing you how to use one of these which you've seen thousands of times by now by magic I'm doing this. Ta da! So here it is. It's done. It's connected. So let's open the computer and let's put it in. So it has to go in down there. That's the connection. So I will be putting in and it will probably be a little bit of struggle. There's not much room, but let's just try to get it in. Finally, I'll temporarily just put it down here, but I will mount it eventually. Now that we're here, let's at the same time insert the XTIDE. So we need the cable. And it's not a very smart design because as you can see this goes like this, but this actually has to go like this. So the cable will be bent like this. So the idea is to put the XTIDE 
into this slot here and then move the CF card reader into the first slot. So it's kind of like gonna be like this. Again, it will probably be a little bit of a struggle. There we go. Let's put the lid on. And let me hook up the keyboard and a monitor. So the keyboard is hooked up. I have the disc and we need a compact flash. I have already one here. This one is a 512 megabyte. I have this pre-formatted. It has DOS 6.22 on it. And I have already copied this over to that. So we don't need to put it up on this one, but it's, it's gonna be the same. So I'll put this one into the computer. So let's turn it on and see if something comes up on the monitor or flat screen. There we go, it's starting up and it wants us to go into the CMOS. This area of the screen, this is the XTIDE telling me I can either boot from the floppy drive or from this scan disk, which is the 512 megabyte disk. So I'll do C for boot on a hot, hot disk. And now starting MS DOS. There we go. So on the disk, I have a folder called BIOS. Within that folder, I have a M280. And in here, there's a program called Olivetti Bat that will actually start the program and go into the BIOS. It asks us English, France, Spanish, Deutsch or Italiano. Let's do English. And it now recognizes this is the 280 uh, model of the computer. And there we are. Let's set the date. It's not the 10th 000440. Let's set the time to something. And the memory, there's no extended memory in it at the moment. So let's take that away. The floppy disk drive A is a 1.44 megabyte. And the B drive is a 1.2. There's no hard disk, either C or D, physical hard disk in it. There's no core processor and the CIT adapter is a VGA, so that's enhanced graphics. Let's go out. It will then reboot. And we have no errors left. Everything is good. So booting from C. So that's a success. Eventually I'll put more memory inside this computer so it comes up to at least one megabyte. I just need to locate an expansion board with some memory on it. So that was that. The BIOS is now up and running and to test it, taking off the power and I will wait for a while and we'll probably fast forward. So let's say that I'm doing this for 10 minutes. Let's try again. Mm. 
let's check the date. Perfect, time is the same. So we are all good. Sorry, let me go. One task down, actually two. BIOS and extended IDE inside. So the next thing now, that will be the keyboard. So I have my tools ready, the keyboard on the table. And let's start cracking it open. So there are one, two, three, four, five, and then you need to open this six, seven screws. So let me unscrew that. So now we need to get the keyboard off. And there are also some plastic hinges in there and in there and in there. So we need to have a screwdriver and then see if we can get it out. Screwdriver. And here we have the keyboard. And the keyboard like this. It's connected to this print board with some ribbon cable, so we'll be very careful for that. I will turn it around without breaking anything. And here we have the wires. So what we need to do, which is why I have this, which is the other end, I printed it out. So we need to measure which color of the cable goes to which printout. That's why I'm having this one. So let's try the Black one, there are two black ones in this one, one on each side. This one is a thick one. So that's ground. So I'll write ground. Let's just for fun try the other black one on the other side to see if that's the same. It's not. This goes to number one. Let's take the white one. That goes to number two. Let's do brown, which goes to number three. And then comes red, which is number four. And then we have the orange one, which goes to number nine. So I made a printout of the different connections. So I know where to go from now. This is the color for the um, ethernet cable that will eventually put in. Um, once we have sorted the rest out here. So I now know where which pin or color goes to each pin on here. And I wrote it also down here. Let's move to the cable and let me take the voltmeter away. Let 
look at the mess on the table already. So what I am going to do is I'm going to cut the cable down here and then I will splice the two cables. So this one, I will splice it in here. Um, this is because this is only temporary, as I said, and I don't want to mess with all this right now. So I'll just splice it into each other down here and have the cable go out. So let me clip this, remove the cable and remove this thing down here, and then we'll take it from there. On the other end, I will have to open this one up. And um, as a matter of fact, I have a spare one of these here. Which has the same, same pin outs, one, two, three, four, and then nine down here. This is where the other end of the cable will go in. And then we'll fix that this way. So let's park this one back in the back. Let's clean up the table and let's fix the cable after that. That's the next project on the keyboard. I would like at this point actually just to make a shout out to one of my YouTube, Danish YouTube fellow, um, Retro Computing with Mike. Um, I will give you a link in the description to his homepage. He actually did the same thing with a vintage Danish computer from Rheinzentralen, which was called Pigoline. And he had the same issue with the cable, so he had to make the same thing. So instead of me explaining too much, you can go on his channel and see how he actually explains what he was doing. And I will just do this and fast forward with it. So once we're done, we can hook this keyboard actually to the computer. So we move to the bench. And let's heat it up and see if it works. I think we're gonna leave this for an hour to cool down and then I'll see if it actually works. The keyboard cable is done. I'm not happy with the result, but as I said, this is just a trial and a temporary solution until I get the right cable. So there are a lot of problems using these kinds of cables which is just a uh, ethernet cable and i don't know if it shows off but it's bummed and it's not smooth and another issue that i kind of like figured out was that even though i used a what i thought was a tiny steel thing so the diameter diameter was not big but the end result is a huge one here instead of this tiny one. So once I get the right cable, I'll probably also have to have a smaller one of these. So the end result will be more like this. 
but it actually worked ish let's just go with ish it has it but if i stretch it out it doesn't really come back again but hey that's fine let's try to turn on the computer and i will obviously adjust the video camera so you can see the screen and we will have a test and see if the keyboard actually works so let me adjust the camera i hope this is better so let's remove the old cable that goes in the trash bin and let's turn it on so let's try some keystrokes Every single one of them is working. So that's actually amazing. The last thing, so that I can say the M280 is all good, that's to put back the original labels. They go on the behind of the computer. This goes underneath and this goes in the back. This is with the one with the serial number. So let me turn the computer around and let's screw them in. And then we can say we're done. So this one, this goes here. And this one goes underneath it. Let's find the screws. Screwdriver, four tiny, tiny screws. So let's see if we can fix this. What a journey with this one. It's all done. And I'm very pleased with the end result. It was rusty, so I ended up, as you may know, I ended up glass blasting it, and then I painted it. Then we looked into the BIOS issues. We had some issues with that. We fixed it. We put in the XT IDE drive. The keyboard cable was not was disintegrating, so I had to make a new one, and so on and so on. So four episodes just with the M280 it was actually really nice. Going back to an 80 computer. So the reason why I made this kind of four series was that the Septandi was or is a thing where people introduce the Tandy computers in September. And I was just playing around with Olivetti and that rhymed with October. So hashtag Olitoba just came up. And I'm new, but other people actually joined in a bit on this. On, on Facebook, the hashtag is there also, where people are showing me some of their Olivetti computers. And one of my YouTube friends here in Denmark, Mike, he also made a episode on an Olivetti M24. So that was really, that was really cool. I would like to shout out to one specific person 
who actually helped me a lot and he has also helped me a bit with some of the other computers. He is called Heinko and he's from Germany. And the story by him, behind him, is that he actually has a homepage where he shows off all of his Olivetti's. And I think there are like 50 or 60 different Olivetti's. Their PCs, their laptops, their mini computers, they are also typewriters and other stuff from the Olivetti brand. And it actually comes because that his father was working for Olivetti. So he had that interest when he was a child, more or less. So I would like you, once I'm done and said goodbye and thank you all, uh, to go on his webpage and have a look at all of the Olivetti computers. He has a lot of images and stories about it. So it's a really good homepage. It's olivera.de. I will link somewhere to his homepage and go have a look. It's really, really cool. He specifically helped me with this one because I couldn't find um, the BIOS setup disk. And he actually has a lot of images from all of his computers on disks. And he sent me that image. So I was able to get the BIOS up and running and Mike, the Danish YouTuber I just mentioned before, he was the one who produced the image onto the disc for me. So thank you both, really helpful. And I enjoy, I'm even getting boost comes just talking about it. I really enjoy that this community about people into retro computing, we are actually helping each other. We are there for each other and lending a hand and whatever we can and good advices and stuff. So that's super cool. So with this, I would like to thank you. And as you can see, it's running. There's even a game on it right now. And 